What if I told you there's an engine technology that could completely revolutionize transportation as we know it? An engine that runs on literally nothing but air, produces zero emissions and costs pennies to operate. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, compressed air engines are making a serious comeback and they might just be the game changer we've all been waiting for. Here's the crazy part. This isn't actually new technology. Compressed air engines have been around since the 19th century during the Second Industrial Revolution. The Marari system was one of the early pioneers, using a brilliant single-piston design that expanded compressed air through a hot water tank before entering the engine. This setup was so effective that it powered trams and mine locomotives across Europe. But then something happened. The fossil fuel industry exploded, oil became cheap and abundant, and this incredible technology was simply forgotten, left in the dust of history while we built an entire civilization around burning dead dinosaurs. Fast forward to the early 2010s, and companies like MDI decided it was time to bring this technology back from the dead. They developed the MDI 208, a hybrid vehicle that achieved an absolutely mind-blowing 141 miles per gallon. Think about that for a second, 141 mpg. This wasn't some concept car either. It featured a sophisticated dual powertrain system with compressed air for acceleration and gasoline for cruising. The engineering was remarkable. A compressed air tank sat below the boot, a low-pressure chamber near the rear axle, and a hydraulic system in the engine bay. The vehicle could recharge its compressed air through braking or by using the engine itself. Even automotive giants like GM started paying attention. Today's compressed air engines have evolved light years beyond those early designs. Instead of single-stage systems, we now have piston-driven engines operating at much higher RPMs. Springs handle piston movement with precision, and consistent air heaters have replaced those old water heating systems. But here's where it gets interesting. These engines need a small electric motor to get started, similar to how your car's starter motor works. Once running, the system becomes completely self-sustaining, powered by nothing but compressed air. Now before we get too excited, let's talk about the elephant in the room. Current compressed air engines are still incredibly inefficient. We're talking about maybe 80 miles of range on a full tank, and that's being optimistic. For city commuting, this is already pushing it. For road trips, forget about it. The energy density of compressed air is frustratingly low compared to gasoline or even modern batteries. These engines also struggle with power output, especially torque, making them less than ideal for hauling or heavy-duty applications. And because they need to run at high RPMs without traditional liquid fuel lubrication, wear and tear becomes a serious issue. Then there's the safety concern. Highly pressurized air tanks aren't exactly harmless if something goes wrong. Though to be fair, gasoline tanks and lithium batteries come with their own risks too. But here's why this technology isn't dead in the water. Companies worldwide are actively solving these problems. Australian company Engineer developed the Di Pietro motor, which is a rotary compressed air engine that's already being used in boats and industrial carriers. Armando Ragucci's 1990 prototype, built practically in a shed, managed 60 miles on a single tank. If a garage-built prototype could achieve that 30 years ago, just imagine what modern engineering could accomplish. The solutions are already emerging. High-pressure air tanks can dramatically increase energy density. Carbon fiber chassis designs could serve as both structure and air reservoir, keeping weight down while improving safety and range. And when carbon proves too expensive, advanced thermoplastics offer a cheaper alternative with similar benefits. Here's what makes this really interesting. We're living through an automotive revolution. Every major manufacturer is desperately searching for the next breakthrough technology. Toyota's pushing hydrogen fuel cells. Everyone else is racing toward better batteries. But compressed air? That's the dark horse nobody's talking about. Think about the implications. Air is literally everywhere, it's free, and it's completely renewable. No mining operations destroying ecosystems for lithium, no geopolitical conflicts over oil reserves, no toxic waste from battery disposal, just air. Of course, there's a reason why revolutionary technologies sometimes take decades to reach the market. The current energy infrastructure represents trillions of dollars in investments. Oil companies didn't become some of the most powerful corporations on earth by accident and they're not about to give up that position without a fight. Look at sodium batteries. They solve virtually every problem with lithium-ion technology, they're cheaper, more environmentally friendly, and use abundant materials. Yet they remain largely unknown because they threaten massive existing profit streams. But here's the thing about revolutionary technologies. They only need one major breakthrough to change everything. 
Toyota is already shaking up the industry with their new ammonia and hydrogen engines. They're just too big, and honestly, too committed to innovation to be silenced by traditional energy interests. The automotive industry is at a tipping point. Consumers are demanding cleaner alternatives, governments are implementing stricter emission standards, and the technology is finally catching up to the vision. Imagine pulling into a refueling station and filling up your tank for the cost of running an air compressor, literally just cents per fill-up. Imagine never worrying about fluctuating gas prices or battery degradation. Imagine driving a vehicle that produces absolutely zero emissions while being cheaper to operate than anything on the road today. The question isn't whether compressed air engines will eventually become viable. The question is, who will crack the code first and reshape the entire transportation industry in the process? The race is on, and compressed air technology might just be the ultimate underdog story of the automotive world. What do you think? Are we witnessing the beginning of the end for traditional engines, or is this just another promising technology that will fade into obscurity? The next few years will tell us everything we need to know.